Welcome everyone to another edition of Play It Through, and on this edition it's Mickey Mouse 3, Yumi Fujin, brought to us by Chemco. Released in North America as Kid Clown in Nightmare World, which was the first game in the Kid Clown series, Mickey Mouse 3 is obviously the third game in the Mickey Mouse series. But the Mickey Mouse series that it's referring to really wouldn't be known as a Mickey Mouse series in North America. It's actually referring to the Crazy Castle series which saw the original Crazy Castle known as Bugs Bunny Crazy Castle in North America and Roger Rabbit for the Famicom Disk System. However, the Game Boy version was actually named Mickey Mouse in Japan. The Crazy Castle series has a very confusing name scheme, that's for sure. But as far as Mickey Mouse 3 is concerned, well, it's actually the only game in that series that's not really, well, a Crazy Castle game. In fact, it's more of a traditional platformer that has Mickey Mouse actually using balloons to take out different enemies. Of course, since Capcom owned the copyright to Mickey Mouse in North America, they had to change the name and that's why Kid Clown and Nightmare World was created for the North American audiences, which ended up spawning a series of its own for Chemco. So after that little bit of confusing history along with the game, here we go with Mickey Mouse 3 Yumi Fusion or Mickey Mouse 3 Dream Balloon for the NES. The version I'm going to be playing of this game is actually a fully translated version of the game, so you'll be able to see all the text in English. Of course, normally Dream Balloon would be in Japanese along with all the other text in the game. When you start up the game, you'll see it's some pretty colorful graphics. Mickey takes a little bit of getting used to in the game. There's no traditional run button in the game. Instead, Mickey builds momentum, eventually building up speed, being able to move at the fastest speed for the longer you're able to keep running continuously. Jumping does not slow you down, only running into an enemy or running into a wall will end up slowing you down. The first stage just really works like a tutorial. After just a few seconds, you'll find a platform that will take you to the boss battle. You'll notice that Mickey can not only jump, but he also, of course, fires out balloons as his main form of attack that can be fired in lots of different directions. For the first boss, it's really simple. Attack him a couple of times, which you can easily see when you do damage to him because he'll change color, and this will apply to all the bosses in the game. After a couple of hits, He'll bounce around the room for a few seconds, reforming, opening himself back up for attacks, hit him a couple more times, and then you'll get to the first of the game's bonus stages. Basically, you'll have to choose where you would like to shoot, and then you get to fire a shot, and you also then get to collect whatever items you're actually able to hit, including health, lives, and other things. After the next cutscene, where you see Mickey and Donald over Minnie's bedside, as Minnie has apparently fallen asleep and unable to get up, you then get to the actual stage screen. You have to do the stages in order, but they give you a nice little thing that you can kinda hang out the main menu for a few seconds before jumping into the level. The first level, much like the intro stage, is a forest-themed stage. There is some Disney-themed music throughout the game as well, including the Mickey Mouse Club theme that was at the opening credit screen, as well as you also have It's a Small World playing at the stage select screen. 
Opening different treasure chests will of course give you different items in the game, including the lightning bolt which gives us invincibility, allowing us to run through enemies in traditional platform style. Inside the boxes will also be fruit that you can gather in order to increase your chips, which is basically the ammo that you'll use in the bonus stage at the end. You'll also be able to find some other stuff including 1-ups, as well as question mark blocks. The question mark blocks will, will give you a random different effect. Most of them are positive, with the only negative being sometimes you'll get one that will reverse your controls for a period of time. Most enemies can be taken out with a single or sometimes two shots from the different balloons. I think I mentioned earlier that you actually can fire in almost any direction with the balloons, which definitely helps you out, especially starting with the boss at the end of stage 1. Here we have a giant vulture-like buzzard, supposed to represent the actual vultures or buzzards from the Jungle Book. He has a couple of moves, he'll either swoop in down at you, or he'll throw a bunch of feathers at you. Thankfully, even when he's on top of the two towers in the area, you can actually keep launching balloons at him, as long as you hold the correct direction. Another really cool thing you can do is actually throw a balloon onto the ground, and then jump on top of it, launching Mickey up in the air to get to higher platforms. While it's not necessary for most of the game, there is one spot where you'll definitely have to do it. Also, bringing out a balloon before you throw it and just holding it, and then jumping with Mickey, will actually allow you to kind of float slowly downwards, allowing you to actually get past a lot of bigger gaps in the game. When it comes to the bonus game, you have all kinds of different fruit that you'll see, besides just health items and 1-ups. As you've already noticed, with the health, you can actually get more than just the default 3 hearts. After you have a full set of health with the 3 hearts, you can then keep replenishing them and getting up to 5 hearts total by grabbing other pieces of health. Every item in the bonus game, besides the chest, which can be a couple of random things, and the extra life itself, all the other ones of the fruits actually represent a certain amount of health you'll regen by picking them up. Stage number two, very similar to the Sega Genesis Sega Master System classic Castle of Illusion starring Mickey Mouse, is actually a toy themed stage. This stage has multiple doors that you'll actually have to travel to the ends of areas to find, and once you do so, you'll have to press up or down on the D-pad in order to enter the doors. Get the invincibility near the beginning of this area, and then you'll be able to run through a large amount of enemies. Here, you'll have to wait for all the different blocks to start moving forward. The white blocks you'll end up falling through, so you'll have to be standing on the stripe-colored ones or the solid-colored ones in order to keep standing without falling down below. In the next area, once you start moving, the screen will start scrolling upwards. As it does so, of course, you'll have to watch out for a large variety of enemies that you've been seeing throughout the level, but also one thing that you probably have noticed already is that the fact that the puzzle pieces spread out along the backgrounds of the stage can actually fall downwards and end up doing damage to you. Just take your time while working your way up here. Of course, if you've done the game a couple of times, you'll know basically where to jump for your next platform, and overall, it's not too difficult. There's not really any tricky areas of this whole thing that'll end up getting you stuck. On the next area, the last area of stage number two before the boss fight, you'll have a large amount of enemies trying to hit you that are stationary in the backgrounds, as well as you'll have a bunch of the jigsaw pieces falling down. Jumping between these guys can be rather difficult, so hopefully you have a decent amount of health going in. Be sure to grab this treasure chest here though, so you can replenish some of the health you may have already lost. Fire some balloons from a large distance to take out some enemies, and then what you'll have to do is over here where this jigsaw falls down, throw a balloon on the ground and spring yourself up into the air. Immediately when doing so though, also throw a balloon up in the air to hit the jack-in-the-box head, then ends up coming loose above. Then you'll have to float over using your special balloon power to get over to the final door in order to make it to the boss fight. Here you're battling a giant anglerfish. The light on his head will eventually start flashing, he also throws out a little anglerfish that will start moving around firing projectiles. Your first job is to take out the antenna-like appendage on his head with the light on it, and then eventually you'll be able to actually attack him head on. He can have up to three little fish flying around with him in the stage, so try to take out at least one of them so that you don't have all three firing projectiles at you while you're trying to take out the big fish. 
Once you deliver, of course, enough hits with the balloons, you'll take care of them, move on to the bonus stage, and then the next level. Level number three is actually a Beanstalk style level. Of course, right out of the scene from Mickey and the Beanstalk from the classic movie Fun and Fancy Free, as well as I think a few other cartoons as well. In fact, we actually get to fight a giant at the end of the level from one of Disney's cartoons, but not actually the one from Mickey and the Beanstalk. Of course, being a giant Beanstalk, our goal is to actually head upwards jumping from different leaves back to another set of leaves to different vines and clouds spread all along the level to make our way up to the very top. Along the way there's some birds that will drop eggs and end up shooting out a bunch of spread shot all over that you'll have to dodge, as well as you'll have some really sad clouds that will try to rain on your parade as you're trying to go up. Of course firing balloons straight up into the air will allow you a lot of times to hit some of these clouds as they're flying overhead, taking two shots to take out one of the clouds. When you make it up to the very top, you have a choice between the left and right door, and for this, we'll be going over to the right door. I'm not positive if both end up leading you eventually to the end or not. For the first area when going through, you can run quickly through the area as you'll have a bunch of blocks that you'll stand on that will end up breaking when you're on top of them. Watch out for all the praying mantises along the way. Next up, we have a mini boss of sorts, as we actually battle Lucifer the Cat from the Disney classic Cinderella. What you have to do is to attack Lucifer, you'll actually have to hit him in the back. If you try to attack Lucifer straight up from the front, he'll just end up popping the balloon with his claw. Once you deliver enough hits and you knock him off screen, the next door that you need to travel to will end up opening up. Go inside, of course, to reveal another part of the beanstalk and start making your way. Anytime you see one of these in the background, you can actually pull out a balloon and actually ride it upwards like an updraft in order to get to a higher part of the area. When doing so, when making your way even higher and higher into the sky, watch out for flying rockets that will be coming out of the lefts and rights of the screen as you make your way up. Thankfully, we were able to grab a little bit of an invincibility along the way to help us out, and when we reach the top, go through another door at the very top. At the top of the beanstalk, of course, is a giant, and Mickey's battled a few giants over the years. The giant here, though, is Rumblewatt the giant from the animated short, Giant Land. This battle ends up being rather easy because you can actually fire that balloon in multiple directions. Just watch out for the mace when he swings it down and fire the balloons either underneath his arm and up to his head, or jump up in the air and attack him straight on in the head when the mace is down. Staying close to him, you'll be able to avoid either the pressers to the left of you, as well as be able to jump over the rolling object as well, though sometimes that will still get in the way doing a little bit of damage. Once you've delivered enough hits and taken him out, it's time to move on to the ice level of stage number 4. This is probably my favorite level and has the more interesting variety of enemies, including the big bad wolf from the Three Little Pig animation that ends up ice skating all around. You also have a bunch of snowmen that you'll have to deal with as well, knocking them off of platforms if you like while you're trying to make your way. You can use your balloons to actually break certain blocks in the game, and here's another example of when you'll have to do that. In the next area though, kind of like Quick Man stage from Mega Man 2, you'll have all these water spouts coming in at you from the ice broken along the right and left walls. The good news is, even if you don't outrun it, it's not an instant death, you just take a little bit of the damage. In the next segment, you'll have ice spikes coming out of the ceiling and the ground. They'll slowly retract back into the walls, and when they do that, that'll be your opportunity, of course, to get by. My favorite enemy in this whole area, though, is definitely the Snow Sloths that end up appearing, moving rather slowly, making snowballs slowly, and finally even throwing them slowly at you. A nice little touch on these guys, for sure. At the end of the area, you'll have to battle an evil snowman as a mini-boss. Just keep firing random balloons at him, eventually you'll knock him off the screen, Sometimes, though, he will summon some snow from above that you will have to dodge. Right after him, though, if you want a little bit of a bonus area, break the rock formation and go inside, and you'll get to an area with a 1-up. Be sure to grab the 1-up and then drop down the hole that's there in order to make it to the next area, immediately grabbing the invincibility and then take off like a rocket, running along all the ice. 
As long as you keep moving, you'll have no issue being able to get through this short little area. The next area actually reminds me of the Himalaya area of the original DuckTales game. Here you have to deal with a bouncing enemy of snow frogs instead of mountain goats, but you also end up getting stuck in the snow during this segment as well. Mickey flails about left and right as he tries to struggle to get out. Of course, jumping will allow you to easily escape, but it's kind of interesting that another Disney game ended up having a very similar mechanic, though both made by different companies. Thankfully, the area though isn't too long as Mickey consistently keeps getting stuck along the way, and eventually it's time to battle a giant snow iguana? This guy ends up jumping out of the water from the left side and starts sliding around the area. Be sure to be under him when he actually jumps over you the first time around, and then when he backs around to you, then fire a balloon at him. You'll be able to hit him and he'll start bouncing the balloon on his nose. Once he does so, immediately throw another balloon right at him in order to damage him. He keeps repeating the same pattern over and over again to make it a rather easy battle. And if you do some really quick timing, you can actually get him to bounce two balloons on his nose per cycle. Interesting though that they ended up changing this boss to a seal in Kid Clown in Nightmare World, which I think works a lot better overall. It's now time to move on to the candy theme stage of stage number 5. This level is candy themed and also similar to another Castle of Illusion stage being the library slash candy themed stage there, including also having jumping letters that attack you as well. All the letters in this area actually do range in different sizes and types, so you have to be careful of a few of the bigger ones at the level. Eventually though, you'll come to a jello mold that you'll actually have to jump onto and actually use that to move yourself downwards in order to make it to the next screen. Throughout here, you have a whole lot of rabbits that are trying to attack you, as well as a couple of giant letter A's. At the end of the area, stand on the platform and press up in order to go up to the next area of this part. While making your way through, watch out for the ice cream cones because they will face you and then fire out the ice cream from the top part of their cone. Climb up this right side here if you need some extra health as well as to get a 1-up, then head over to the left side and continue on the level. At the top of this area, usually I like to use the balloon to kind of float over the giant bowl that's trying to attack, before eventually making it to another jello mold on the right side that I can go down and make it to the next screen. Here, you'll once again have some more rabbits to deal with, and on the jello molds themselves, you can actually bounce on them in order to get across the areas. Here, thankfully, I'm able to get another one of those invincibilities and use that to run through a large majority of enemies throughout this little bit of area. Drop down the next jello mold and it's time for the boss fight. For the giant caterpillar, what you'll have to do is you'll have to fire out balloons and attack him directly in the head. Thankfully, even with his tail trying to chase you down and attack you and throw in the mushrooms, overall this ends up being a pretty easy fight since you can actually launch balloons from either the really up close to him or from the complete opposite side of the area as well. Just keep jumping, dodging as much as you can from the tail as the tail moves slowly back and forth trying to get at you from below, and you'll eventually be able to take him down. Once he's taken care of, deal with the last bonus game in the game before we move on to the final stage.
What platforming game wouldn't be complete without a final level and this one has a pretty big one as a giant dark castle ends up appearing in the center of the stage select, lightning strikes before Mickey's able to actually enter the level. At the beginning of the stage you'll be outside the castle and a whole bunch of spears will either be coming down from the sky or also coming straight at you from the castle walls. Try to dodge as many as you can as you make your way over, jumping over another small wall, skipping the first door that you come to, and continuing on to the second door. There's a lot of different doors in this castle, however, you only want to travel into a few of them to make it right to the end of the area and get to the end boss. A lot of the ones here will either take you backwards, or they'll take you to rematches against all the stage's bosses. While most games make you do a boss rush and have you actually fight all the enemies, you don't actually have to do any of the rematches. The only reason you would really want to is if you're really low on health, you can fight one of the bosses and if you survive, you'll get a large amount of health back. The card soldiers from Alice in Wonderland will also be adorning this area of the castle, trying to fire out giant boomerang-like items at you. They do take two hits to take out, and the boomerang ends up taking up a decent amount of space when they throw it out, so be careful. As you're jumping up these platforms here, be sure to grab the extra life if you need it, as well as avoid all the cogs that are rolling back and forth. Thankfully, you can take out this soldier from below before jumping up on top. After running through, you'll see the next door down below, but you can't get to it quite yet, and said you'll have to travel all the way over to the right, drop down, and then work your way back over to the left. Be careful not to actually jump on one of the balloons and send yourself flying back into the air. Here, fire at one of the giant statue-like heads here and then push it all the way over to the left so you can actually make it inside the door. Inside the next area, you'll see a door over to the left, but we're going to ignore that for now as we can't get to it without, of course, dropping all the way down the big pit and then working our way back upwards. Along this path, of course, will be giant cogs trying to hit you as well, but thankfully in the tight area, though, they kind of get stuck a little bit, so you'll have plenty of opportunity to deliver hits with them. The next screen actually has a bunch of conveyor belts that will push or pull you in different directions. You'll actually have to complete this room twice, which is kind of weird, but what you'll have to do is work your way up through all the conveyor belts, watching out for some cogs, and when you make it to the top, you'll actually see two doors there. Either door is okay to enter. No matter which door you enter, you're gonna reappear at the beginning of the room. Once you do so, work your way back around the little area with all the conveyor belts, eventually getting back to the doors as well. When you make it to the top, choose the left door in order to go through and make it to the actual final room of the dungeon. Here you'll have a whole lot of doors. A lot of the doors will actually take you either back or the other rematches, but the door you want is the left door on the top, which will take you to the boss gauntlet. The first form of the final boss is actually a giant dragon that you have to deal with before you even get to the boss. 
Fire balloons from the left side of the screen, watching out as he will use his wings to kind of blow you back and spit fire at you. When he does the fire, use your balloons to your advantage to stay floating up into the air so that you can actually jump over all the fire. Once you've delivered enough hits to the dragon, it's time to see the real final boss of the game. And who is it? Well, it's actually a main villain from one of my absolute favorite Disney movies, even though it actually is considered one of the worst Disney films of all time. That be the Horn King from the Black Cauldron. He stands still in the background for his first form, firing out a few projectiles. All you have to do is jump up in the air and launch up balloons to him, delivering about six or so hits in order to defeat him and move on to the second form. For the second form, he ends up spitting out projectiles at you, spitting out five at a time. He'll also then teleport to another part of the screen, and once he does so and reforms, you'll have the chance to hit him a couple of times before he ends up spitting out those projectiles at you again. Try to keep your health up because you actually do have another form to deal with for the final boss as well after this one, though I find the final form easier than the first two. For the final form, the Horn King's head actually dislodges from his body and starts flying around the room. He's going to try to get in your way, he will fire out a projectile that will bounce around the room. Eventually he'll shoot out more projectiles, but if you're quick with the balloons you should actually be able to defeat him before he's able to get out any more of the projectiles. Once you beat him though, you can sit back and enjoy the ending to Mickey Mouse 3. You actually have a pretty nice ending to Mickey Mouse 3 before then getting to the credit screen, which rolls with a nice black background but fireworks will actually shoot up, giving a nice little feel. While Mickey Mouse 3 never made it to North America, its North American counterpart of Kid Clown is actually a pretty fun game as well with only really minor changes overall. Some changes to the soundtrack as well as of course some enemies had to be changed up due to the fact of Disney copyrights. And like I mentioned in the intro to the game, this is actually part of a long-running series in the Crazy Castle series. What exactly it has to do with all the other Crazy Castle games, I'm not exactly sure. Their naming scheme alone is enough to confuse any normal gamer, that's for sure. Including also licenses not only with Disney with Roger Rabbit and Mickey Mouse, but you also have Bugs Bunny, Woody Woodpecker, Garfield, and even the Ghostbusters being involved in various other Crazy Castle games. It's also interesting to note that being Mickey Mouse 3, it was also the only one of the Mickey Mouse games in that five game series that was released for a system other than the Nintendo Game Boy. 
And overall, it may not have been the most amazing little platformer for its time. Mickey Mouse 3, Dream Balloon, or Kid Clown in Nightmare World is still a fun experience for a late NES or Famicom title, and overall though I can definitely recommend checking it out if you're able to get a hold of it. I am not a huge fan though of the other Crazy Castle or especially the Magical Wand games that ended up being Mickey Mouse 4 and 5. But, if you like interesting little platform puzzle style games, they're definitely worth checking out. At the end of the credits, you end up getting a thank you for playing, and then you also get a code that you can put in to play the game again, this time on hard mode. Though it doesn't really add anything really new or exciting overall to the gameplay, and actually I think it's a little bit less fun than the normal difficulty. But with that, that's going to wrap up this edition of Play It Through. I'd like to thank you for watching, and of course, I hope you enjoyed.